In March 2020, we traveled to Vienna to meet the founder of Jonas Reindl Coffee Roasters, Philip Feyer. We talked with him about coffee roasting, running multiple coffee shops in the city, and we also asked him how a strong heritage of Viennese coffee houses influenced the modern coffee scene today. This video is sponsored by Cropster. They write software that helps people make better coffee. Uh, we've been roasting for about one and a half years and uh, as a coffee company we exist since over five years now. We were, I think, part of like the second wave of specialty coffee in Vienna. The same year as us, there were in 2014 a bunch of other shops that opened and that's what I mean with like the second wave that um, you can tell in the past five years uh, specialty coffee has become completely part of Vienna's coffee scene. The name Jonas Reinl comes from the location where our first coffee shop is. It's actually a reference to a pretty famous tram and subway station right there and that's kind of the reason we chose that name is that it's a very Viennese term. So for Viennese people, it's almost like an insider joke. And when they hear it, they on one hand, they know where we are because it's a reference to the location, but also they know it's Viennese people behind the whole thing. And that was important to me as well, because I think Vienna has a lot of traditional coffee culture and we wanted to bring, you know, specialty coffee and sort of new coffee culture to Vienna, but at the same time, keep it Viennese. We'll say, I think, other than that, we're actually not typically Viennese in many, many ways, right? We have a very international team from people anywhere from Chile to Poland or Scotland and all over the world really but we do for instance you know serve certain beverages which are coffee beverages that are really Viennese just by their name you know so melange is one example which is basically we just are making a flat white or a cappuccino but melange is just a really Viennese term for that as well or a verlängerte which is like basically just an americano but like people can order names that they know from any other traditional cafe and we'll we would never be like we don't do that big next step for me was to start ro roasting the coffee that we use at our first shop myself and then we opened our second cafe with the roaster on site in december 2018 it was my dream also to bring roasting close to our guests and um, while it would have probably been easier opening our roastery somewhere on the outskirts of town it would have been very removed from our guests and you can tell that it's really something that people love and, and just to see how coffee is even roasted it's like a picture says more than a thousand words if people can see what we're doing it uh, is a great tool to communicate what what we're about roasting is in many ways something that you have to teach yourself i'd say but learning from others is, is huge. It's really important because you have some information in books and online, no doubt, but you know, it's a lot of trial and error as well. But to me, uh, what really got me into it, I think was, yeah, just the fact that it's sort of the natural progression. I just, I'm always kind of looking for what can I do next? What can, how can I learn something new, expand? my understanding of coffee and that's why from barista to me the natural progression was just roaster and this is what I usually say I think what's most important and also the most difficult maybe is just really working on your palate and, and just, just uh, tasting a lot of coffee and understanding what you're going for and, and how to achieve it. For everything to do with roasting, uh, crops can be a 
big help, especially when it comes to making conclusions about how to roast the coffee and small changes in parameters such as temperatures or length and total roast time or length of development time. Even sometimes those are just really small changes you're making, but having the ability to kind of compare all your roast profiles and seeing those small differences you made visualized, uh, I think is very helpful in understanding what to actually do differently in order to affect the coffee a certain way. So this is um, our Guatemala filter coffee. You know, the entire profile is actually the same, but for some reason, the drying phase was slightly longer for this coffee. Could have to do with the fact that maybe it's lost some of its moisture in the meantime. Uh, could also be other factors, but uh, all this data, as you can see, just helps us also to be really consistent with our roasts. I think one part uh, of roasting is building up relationships to people, uh, wholesalers or producers, because, you know, we're all out there looking for the best coffees and sometimes about who gets there first. We have an uh, espresso blend, which, for instance, 70% of it is a coffee from Nicaragua. And uh, there we have a long lasting relationship with the farm. It's uh, Finca Salomon because the guy who we work closely with is called Ulrich Salomon. And the funny story is he's actually an Austrian who lives in Nicaragua since 15 years, is a huge coffee freak and just uh, decided he would like to go into coffee farming. And uh, the coffee farm that we actually get our coffee from is called Finca Los Alpes because it's actually named after the Alps, after the Austrian Alps. And uh, that's kind of his, uh, so it's also the highest in terms of altitude. And when you're up there, because you know I did visit him in Nicaragua, it's also kind of a little bit like the Alps, like sitting up in the Alps. That's the irony, kind of, because you're halfway across the world. I like the idea that we have a lot of control over how our coffee is consumed. We have two coffee shops where we get a lot of feedback on our coffees, right? Because sometimes maybe as a coffee roaster, you're actually not in touch with your clients that much if you're just selling your beans somewhere. And we, we get daily feedback from our guests. I think it's about finding a good balance between what you like and, and what also works for many others. And, and maybe also offering a menu where there's something for everyone. strong very old tradition here which on one hand is an opportunity because I think Austrians drink a lot of coffee and they just love coffee a lot so you know we're meeting them at a good place already and at the same time it means that we have to change some minds about what good coffee is or what tasty coffee is and it means that we do have to educate a lot and uh, at the same time I think that is a part of the job that many of our baristi and also I as a roaster are actually excited about. The fact that we can provide a new experience to, to many people and show them this product that they already love in a whole different light and, and kind of show them this whole world of flavors that they have never even known to exist uh, in coffee.